I've actually, you wouldn't know it from all the ignorant shit I've said so far, but I, I am a changed person, believe it or <laughs> not. I am. I had an experience uh, earlier this year. This is all true. Now, you don't think so? Some guy just yelled bullshit. Are you saying bullshit, sir, because you don't believe me or because you don't want me to leave? Is that what it is? The little angry circle that you're in? Don't be going getting happy now. Don't be going getting soft on me. Don't start hugging people and loving yourself and crying when you see something cute. Hang on to it. Lash out at people. Reach for your pistol under the seat. Do it. No, I, uh, I took mushrooms back in February for the first time ever. You know? <laughs> this is the perfect state to tell this story. You guys should literally have... You should have mushrooms on your fucking license plate. All right, so here's the deal. I never fucked with anything like that. I was always a booze guy. I was a booze guy, you know. I, yeah, you know. I like, all right, relax, everybody. I always get, like, I always get nervous when I get white guys going like, yeah, all right, woo, ah, build the wall, all right, all right, all right. I just, I'm fucking around, relax. It's frightening to listen to, but that's what being a guy is. You're not allowed to have emotions. So that's all of that shit comes out when you drink. Ah, ah, ah. Do something dumb so I don't feel stupid. Ah, ah, ah. So, yeah, I was always like a booze guy. So, like, I never fucked with, like, psychedelics or whatever. So I think, you know, it was just one of those deals. I was out in the desert, man. And I was like, all right. I got somebody watching my kids. Everything's fine. I'm in my 50s. I got to do it now or I'm never going to do it, right? So this person who might, may, or, may or may not have been my opening act tonight goes, all right, man. <laughs> um, he's a good man. He's a good man. He says to me, he goes, all right. He goes, okay, just, you know, just take like, you know, you know, you know, it's always just like, all right. So like, how fucked up do you want to get, all right? <laughs> And there's always like a square, and it's like, okay, don't eat the whole square. Just like bite one corner, lick the other one, and then rub the other one and let it absorb in your face or whatever. So I'm like, all right. He goes, how far into it do you want to go? I go, I just want to trip a little bit. Nothing fucking crazy. So he goes, fine. So I ate just a little bit. So I get a little nauseous or whatever. At first, it feels like I ate some weed, but then all of a sudden, like, I notice shit that's not alive looks like it's breathing, right? <laughs> like the refrigerator looked like it just... Did a lap around the house, it's kind of... <laughs> Nothing threatening, you know? It's just like, you know, it needed it, you know? <sighs> TV started getting bigger. It's looking like it's gonna fall on me, all right? And I was doing fine. I was fine. I was like, I know that TV's not getting bigger. And if it is, I don't give a shit. Go ahead, spill that pixelation all over me. I don't give a fuck. I know I'm tripping. I'm having fun. I'm giggling. I'm laughing at shit, I'm putting things together, right? And everything is fucking great. And all of a sudden, about an hour in, all of a sudden, this profound sense of loneliness and not feeling loved just washed over me. Yeah, and I was just like, I fucking knew it. I fucking knew it. This is why I didn't do it. I knew I had too many demons. I knew I wasn't gonna see God and fucking unicorns and slide down the rainbow and, and roll around in the grass. I fucking knew Satan was coming up. There was gonna be a guy with a knife and shit. I was just like, all right, go ahead. Drag me into the abyss. Let me see how fucked up I am. And this feeling, it just, it just enveloped me. And I don't even know how to describe it. It wasn't even a feeling. It just was. It just was. So I'm freaking the fuck. I'm just sitting there like, what the fuck? I can't get out of it, dude. Like, I, I could walk a hundred fucking mu million miles. I can't walk out of it. It just was. So I didn't want to, everybody else is like tripping. I don't want to fucking ruin their trip. So I'm just like, all right, dude. I'm just going to go to the bedroom, you know. <laughs> and, oh, look at the refrigerator. Refrigerator. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'm just feeling a little nuts. <laughs> Hell yeah. Just playing it off, right? Going in the fucking bedroom, and I'm just laying down in the bedroom like, dude, what the fuck? What the fuck? And every time, every time I fe thought I felt the bottom, it would just, just further into the bed, further into the bed, further into the bed. 
So about a half hour later, my wife comes in. She's like, hey, how you doing? Typical guy. Good. I'm doing great. <laughs> doing great. It's going great. So she's laying next to me. I'm feeling a little nauseous. This is a little bit much for me. And she's just laying down. And I'm just feeling this feeling. Not feeling loved. Profound sense of loneliness. So now I'm just looking at my wife. My brain just starts going like, oh, fuck. Did I marry the wrong person? Why am I looking at... I know that seems fucked up, but once you're married long enough, even not on mushrooms, you have that thought every fucking six weeks. You just do. Something happens where you just look at the side of their head and just do the math and just think, why did I ever talk to you? Why didn't... I could have just walked by. I didn't have to say hello. We had no relationship. We, we, we were nothing. Why did I ever talk? What, what, what would happen if I just never talked to you? Every six weeks, you think that's a healthy relationship. That means you still held on to a part of yourself. That even though you love this person, you know, you still, you, you know, you still want to fucking run around like a Mustang a little bit, right? So anyways, I'm like, okay. I, I was like, dude, that was freaking me out even more to think of my wife and, 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 and be feeling that. So I was like, fuck, fuck, I need to pull the ripcord. I got to get out of this. I got to get out of this fucking, it's like a giant beanbag. I couldn't get out of it, right? So I was like, oh, fuck. Think about your kids. Think about your kids. Now, my kids, I love my kids. And I know they love me. There is no fucking question. And I start thinking about my kids. And I still felt that feeling. And I was like, all right. What the fuck is this? Because I know that's bullshit. And I just sort of laid there. And I relaxed. And I went, oh, fuck. I know what this is. <laughs> this is how I felt growing up. <laughs> yeah. This is what the 70s and 80s were like. Both your parents work. You got a set of keys to the house when you were three. Ah, get outside. Get the fuck out of my face. Right? It was fucking nuts. Yeah, I grew up in a very, like, angry time. You know, like, you were afraid of your dad, your dad's dad. I talked about this shit before, but I'm still working through it, so just bear with me. You just were fucking... Yeah, like, I love seeing kids nowadays loving their dad. Like, dad, what's dad? Like, wanna go play, dad? Let's Go ride bikes, dad, dad. Yeah, when I was a kid, I was like, dad, dad, fuck, dad, fuck. Run, open a window. Mom, what did you see in that? <laughs> fucking lunatic, right? Yeah. It was absolute fucking lunacy. And, and not just my house, I love my parents, but it was just the time. Like everybody was fucking crazy. You were afraid and people could put their hands on you and other people's dads could hit you. And then you come home, oh, what the fuck did you do? I'll fucking hit you first. I'm just nuts. Teachers would grab you, dig their nails into your fucking neck. She'd come home. Well, well, well she wouldn't have done that unless I'm fucking happened, right? It was all of that shit. Yeah, me and my siblings, we all beat the shit out of each other, you know? And then we all teased the dog, and the dog bit all of us. And we never got rid of the dog. One time the dog bit me in the face. I was fucking with it. It was eating it. I was like, ah, ah. And it just latched onto my face. It was like, like that. My dad had to stitch me up and everything. We still didn't get rid of the dog. You know? Ah, oh, he's a good dog. He had a moment. Jesus Christ. Well, oh, Jesus Christ. You're starting to put your goddamn face down there. There's a fucking dog there. Right? When did you start shaving your head? Uh, when did I start shaving my head? I shaved it. I had my first, my first special. I had it shaved. Really? I didn't... Yeah. When I saw you in New York I'm for glad, the Patrice I'm glad thing. you liked it. I, I see I you like losing the roof there in the back. Yeah, You'll be right bit, there with me. Bit. I'll be we'll, do a, we'll do a buddy cop show. Exactly. All right? Two yeah. balding old guys. Exactly. Going after some hairy criminal. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of Steve Jobs, personally. What are you talking about? I just, I don't know. I just don't understand what, why, what the big deal was with that guy. <laughs> I don't get it. He, he's like Edison. I don't know. He invented no. all this stuff, everybody. What are you but, talking but about? Did he? Did he? Did, like, did he sit down and like, I'm going to invent the iPhone and just sat there soldering, possibly welding, right? <laughs> Didn't he have, like, a crew of guys helping him out? Sure, maybe he did. So why, when he went to those nerd fests, didn't he have, like, an, like, a, like, a chorus of scientists behind him who helped him out, too? He walked out like he was Tesla. <laughs> like, tapping into electricity. I'm not with you. I think he just kind of, like, told people what to invent. Like, he just kind of came in, like, I want my whole music collection in that phone. Get on it! <laughs> and then all these nameless, faceless guys...
Yeah. Made it happen. Yeah. And then they have the big nerd concert, and he goes out there by himself. No belt, you know, sneakers on. I just didn't buy it. <laughs> when you took it out on Philly, because they were a bad crowd. Oh, yeah. Your famous rant, yep. which you've since said you like Philadelphia, and that wasn't the issue. You were just giving... People in Philly don't even remember. Uh, basically, if you ha haven't seen it, I was doing a show uh, for the Opie and Anthony uh, radio program, and they had this show called The Traveling Virus, and we were doing these, like, 10,000 seaters, and we went to Philly, um, and they're notorious for booing people, and they booed the first guy off stage, and I went on, like, three hours after that. So by the time I got up there, it was a complete shit show. And... Uh, I don't know. They started booing, and I snapped and decided I wasn't going to leave, and I just attacked everything that they loved. Yeah. <laughs> Can women be funny? Yeah, of course. Will you guys just fucking grow up and just sit down and write your own horse shit and come up with it? Start your own fucking show. Have your own award show. Quit waiting around for other people to do shit for you. That's the fucking problem. If you guys had your own big club and I was standing outside of it, you'd never fucking let me in. I'd start my own shit. You guys got to start your own shit. You got brains in there, right? Uh, right? I, yes, absolutely. So write your own shit and quit your fucking whining. We're all eating a giant shit sandwich out here. Nobody cares. I don't care. Well, when was the last time you went on stage and you killed so hard the person after you bombed? If you're fucking doing that on a regular basis, people are going to notice regardless of what you have between your legs. Yeah, at some point I was going to make a point here. That's why I keep looking at here and I just realize I'm blocking myself out of the camera. I love that you have the jib camera for this like it's an action movie. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's swoop in at these two guys sitting in these unbelievably small chairs. I literally feel like I'm going to fall onto the floor. This is insane. <laughs> You really went all out with the audience, though. They got full-size adult chairs. <laughs> Are these, like, from the 20s before they had, like, horse tranquilizers in our food when everybody was, like, five foot one? Yeah, da 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 And nothing's making you mad? Nothing? Nothing oh, things upset me? Yes. I... I don't know. I don't want to... Look... I fly a lot, and there's this whole new thing of generation of people that take their socks and their shoes off on the plane, you got to look at their smelly feet, and then they'll literally stand up and they will walk into a commercial airline bathroom. Yeah, use it, and then walk and sit back down again. That's not right. Yeah, if I was a dictator, those people would be eliminated. <laughs> I love this dude texting for the entire interview. It's just, it's just trying to keep the attentions of millennials. It's like impossible. Look at him. He's already got the chains. He's probably got his own record label. He's like making deals as we speak. He's got championship rings on. I don't know what you're doing, dude, but I want your life, man. You're crushing it. So are you in the process? I cannot get comfortable in this fucking chair. This is just like one of the worst things. This should be like in a museum. Is like the prototype. This is what... <laughs> this was the awful level of comfort. We went from a log to this, and then eventually they got cushions. It's another guy looking at his phone. I swear to God. Dude, the day Jesus comes back, if he ever does, if he's even a real person, like 90% of people are going to miss it. They're going to walk right. He's going to be walking on water and they're immediately walking by him. They're not even going to see it. Oh, yeah. And there's a drop off in fame for Jesus at that point. Everyone was, everyone was paying attention. Now no one gives a shit. Oh, there we go. No, but now this is like the ego one. Now I'm going to be sitting above you. Yeah, you got to no, come man. with two. It's fine. It's fine. Sir, the one... The one comedy through line that's working here is me shitting on this chair. Why would you take that from me? This is, you're just totally going against the grain. I understand it. But you got on camera, so I think you get paid, even though this is online. <laughs> you see Sugar Shay Mosey, one of the greatest boxers of all time. He's losing his championship belt in a divorce. Oh, that's not... Losing, yeah, it's like you're trying to break a man. Why does she want those? <laughs> right? Break they, they, a man. They, they, they go with their shoes. <laughs> you know? No, and I love how when you get a divorce, all of a sudden it costs like 50 grand a month to give a kid Fruit Loops. Right? <laughs> <laughs> These guys, I'm telling you, there is sudden. an epidemic of gold digging whores in this country. <laughs> and it is just not being addressed. Oh my God. We recently got a pit bull which I know a lot of people don't like because they ate a couple of kids. I understand. <laughs> They're great dogs, unless you're a bad owner. If you're a psycho, which I am, you can mess them up. I didn't, I didn't realize that dogs feed off your vibes. 
No. Like if you're cool, if you're chill, they're chilling. If you're sleeping, they're sleeping. Mm. But if you're a psycho like me <laughs> and you're watching the game on TV and you're screaming at the ref like, you got to be shitting me. I didn't realize the dog was in the corner being like, yeah, you got to be <laughs> shitting me. Being a mother is the hardest job out Most there. difficult job Most in the Oprah said that. Oprah said that, yeah. Has, yeah. That, has your opinion on that, on that phrase, changed at all since, since no. you've had a kid? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not the most difficult job on the planet. It just isn't. Dude, I did roofing in July. I almost, as a redhead, I almost died. There's people, there's people that work on like oil. What was that movie that guy made? The oil, the, the fucking, you know, they there drill will be blood. oil. What is it? There will be blood. With Not the... there will be blood. The uh, out in the ocean, they would drill. I can never remember the names. Deepwater. Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, was Deepwater there. Horizon. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Those guys were working on on an oil rig. The fucking thing blows up. <laughs> They're on fire. They got to jump into water that's on fire. <laughs> Salty water into their wounds. You got to swim out of that oil and fire, and then tread water, praying to God that the Coast Guard is going to get there before the sharks do. Now talk to me about a toddler. Oh, he was so fussy today. I just, he wouldn't eat his peas. So what's up with all these white kids now walking around trying to act like they're like gangster rappers? It's irritating. It's like everywhere I go, man, I figure I'd just be here in the city where you got a good mix of people. You know, I'll be like in the middle of Kansas though. Like the whitest state ever. There'll be some howdy doody looking white kid like me. You know, I'm thinking this is one of my peeps. Somebody I can have a conversation with, all of a sudden he's just like, yo, what's up, kid? What's up, kid? I just want to be like, nothing much, Brad. You know, you're keeping it real in Wichita? How the fuck are you going to be a gangster in a state, say, like Nebraska? You know, what do you be like, all hardcore about your crop? Just in there, yo, shit was crazy, you know what I'm saying? My fucking corn wasn't rolling, my fucking scarecrow was tipping over and shit, you know what I'm saying, son? I just want to be like, dude, you're white. Go to the Gap give into it buy some dockers and come home i've been going to gun stores and oh uh, my god I have, and these rednecks are all telling me the same thing because i didn't grow up with guns so they're just going all right you never had a gun you want to get yourself a shotgun it's got a great spread that's what they keep saying it's got a great spread you don't even got to aim you got a problem you just sort of whip around <laughs> Right? I'm sitting there, I'm like, dude, I just want to shoot the guy. I don't have to do like a bunch of drywall work and like reframe my diploma. Go to dance move when challenged. Uh, waiting for the director to say cut. <laughs> that was my go to dance move. Well, I'll tell you, when I, when I saw my kid, it wasn't, uh, I didn't have like, everyone was like, you're going to burst down crying, you're going to blah, blah, blah. I was like scared of it. Like, I was just sitting there like, hey, there, buddy, like, I didn't want to touch it. <laughs> And then, like, afterwards, they give it to me, and I'm hanging with her for the first time, and I'm feeling nothing. And I literally put my head down on the bassinet. I'm going, oh, my God, I'm a serial killer. Like, I, I don't feel things. Google yourself because I was, like, Googling the, the show. No. God knows. I was Googling the show. I get trashed enough on Twitter. You, what, Do you know when I did the show what? last night? This is how, like, like, the millennials are, right? Somebody, uh, I was wearing this exact same thing. You know, I'm on the road, so I got a nice stain <laughs> on my shirt. So I was wearing this exact same thing. I go on Twitter, and somebody wrote... Uh, you know, Bill Burr last night dressed like, like an out of shape Jerry Seinfeld. What? So like, yeah, I wrote back. I can't say what I wrote back. I wrote back. <laughs> you, you did? You so and so. Yeah, it's like, why don't you heckle me when you... All right, so judging by most of your silence, I will do this math for you. Come on. Let's have a little empathy here. Put yourself in a lesbian's shoes. All right? Who do lesbians think? Women. Who do they do? Who do they do? They move in with women. Who do they get in relationships with? Women. Who do they eventually marry? Women. And I was thinking, like, oh my God, I did that. I know what the fuck that's like. I know what it's like to live with one of those fucking things. I know exactly what that's. It's hopeless. Trying to make them happy. Hey, I bought you the shiny thing. Did I do it right? Huh? Trying to get them to take responsibility for their actions. Not gonna happen. The best you're gonna get is I'm sorry, but. I know what it's like to be winning a fucking argument. You're winning, you're winning, you're winning. And then they turn it around. They're crying. You're apologizing. You're thinking, what the fuck just happened? How am I losing this shit? I had you on the ropes. You feel so dumb. You got to go for a walk. And you're just thinking, how did I lose again? How did I lose again? 
and then you figure it out, it makes you feel stupid, and then you see some bald idiot with a giant orange mustache, and you're like, you know what? Why don't you take some of that shit? You take some of that fucking anger. Yeah. <laughs> I feel so stupid that I got mad at that woman. I shouldn't have got mad at her, I should have bought her a beer. And just listen to her troubles and add empathy. And be like, that's not your fault. You married a woman, I did it too. You're not gonna win. There's no winning this. Yeah. I'm telling you, if you don't believe me, do a little people watching. Take a look at the look on the average lesbian's face. All right? I don't mean a lesbian in her 20s. She's got a whole life ahead of her. She's got Christmas in her eyes, right? I mean a lesbian about 35, 36, starting to settle into what the deal's gonna be, right? And then look across the bar, find a married guy about the same age. Look at the look on his face. Look at the look on her face. Go back to his face. It's the same fucking look. Yeah. And then look at gay guys. Some of the happiest people I've ever met in my life. They're almost too happy. It's like, hey, how's it going? They're like, hi! Almost floating across the room with that lack of estrogen just yanking down your fucking dreams. Now, now look, it might be a front. I'm not saying all gay guys are just blissfully happy, but it's looking like a pretty good time to me. Dude, they're some of the most positive people I've ever met in my life. Any idea you have, they support it. They're just like, yes, yes, queen, yes! You're fierce, you can do it! Lesbians are up at the bar like a bunch of jaded cops. That's all fucking bullshit. What the fuck was I thinking? You hauling after 10 days, moving in? What the fuck was I thinking? She's crazy! <laughs> no, I'm telling you, I think married men and lesbians need to start hanging out more. And we gotta put our heads together and try to solve our common problem, the women in our lives. So we can somehow attain the perceived happiness of the average gay dude out there. Yeah. So, if you're believing that shit, I'll give you some advice. If you're gonna expand your fucking world of friends, I'll give you some advice. You can't just hang out with any lesbian. All right? You gotta make sure you're hanging out with the dude in the relationship. Right? And by dude, I'm not saying she's manly, I'm not being ignorant. By dude, I just mean she's the one that gets blamed for most of the shit. Right? Because no relationship is balanced. Somebody is getting away with more. Somebody's drafting behind the other. It's like a bike race. Somebody else is taking the fucking weather in the face. Right? Somebody else is fucking right behind. Oh yeah, it really is wet. Just kind of hiding under your fucking poncho. Male, female, 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 they, they, whatever the fuck it is you're into. Every relationship, there's the person that does the dishes and the person that lets them soak, right? They don't let them soak. They know you're gonna do them. They just wait you out. And after a while, you can't fucking take it anymore. They just sit there. You gotta go out and you start doing it. And then what do they do? They sit in the other room and they wait like they don't know what you're doing. And they wait till they hear pots and pans. And that's when the show starts. That's when they come running in like, what? Oh, I was gonna do those. What? Oh. And you're like, no, you weren't. They've been sitting here for eight hours. I got my hands in room temperature water with scrambled eggs floating around. Don't gas like me. You're a fucking animal. You were raised by animals. Get out of my sight. Don't yell at me. Right? Yes. Every relationship has the person that will take the trash bag out of the trash barrel and do a little we're good, we're good, we're good, tie it off, and then leave it slumped against the counter. Like it took two behind the ear and a mob hit. Just and then there's the person that actually picks it up and takes it out to the curb at night and puts it in the trash can, right? My wife's hilarious, man. I love her, but she's got some of the worst excuses ever. I'm like, why don't you ever take out the trash? She goes, I would, I'm just afraid of coyotes. <laughs> I'm afraid of the coyotes. It's like, so am I, so am I. They're rabbit dogs. They, they hunt in packs of twos and threes. You don't do it because you don't want to do it because you know I'm going to do it. Just get the fuck away from me, please. No, I'm telling you. So, anyway. I know I said a lot of divisive shit here tonight. So before I get out of here, before I get out of here, I, I want to... Let's bring the room together. It's a very divisive time. Everyone wants to feel safe. Let's bring and do a nice, normal, mainstream topic. 
so everybody can drive home happy, no fights, all right? Sound good? All right, great. Let's talk abortion. There you go. <laughs> everybody has an opinion. It's my body, it's my right. Well, then fucking drive to Arkansas, bitch. All right? Everybody has an opinion. As do... I have a really weird take on abortion. I'm gonna tell you that right from the get-go, okay? I'm 100% pro-choice, always have been. It's a, ladies, I said it was weird, for the love of God, stop getting in the trunk of the car. Just wait to the end. You're supposed to vent me first. So the, <laughs> woo! Fucking feed out the sunroof. I said I had a weird take. Pro-choice always makes sense to me because I don't like people telling me what to do. And I always just like, it's your body. Who the fuck am I to tell you what to do with your body? So that always made sense, all right? However, I still think you're killing a baby. See? That's where it gets weird. Like, I sit on the fence and the whole thing makes sense to me. Whatever anybody's saying, like, don't tell me what to do. It's my body, my choice. That's right, man. She's right. Leave her the hell alone. Oh, you're killing a baby. Well, I mean, there is that. You know? I mean, you know, if we're going to be honest, that is the whole purpose of the procedure. You know, you're not going in there because you got an earache. You're going in there because you're like, I got a baby in me, get the fuck out of here. Right? You walk in with a baby, you come out without one. What happened to the baby, right? Something fucking happened. So, Pro-choice people are like, well, it's not a life yet. It's not a baby yet. If you do, I don't know what they say. Before you do it the first Thursday or the last Tuesday, and you spin around one time, they dance between the rain trucks. It's not a baby yet. That's what they say, which may or may not be true. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. But I'll tell you, my gut tells me that doesn't make sense. It's not a baby yet. That would be like if I was making a cake, and I poured some batter in a pan, and I put it in the oven, and then five minutes later, you came by and you grabbed the pan, you threw it across the floor. And I went, what the fuck, he just ruined my birthday cake. And then you were like, well, that wasn't a cake yet. It's like, well, it would have been. If you didn't do what you just did, there would have been a cake in 50 minutes. Something happened to that cake, you cake murdering son of a bitch, right? Now, before all you pro-life people get excited, I think it's great you're killing your babies. It's fantastic. Help Mother Nature out. There's too many of us. It's been 130 degrees out. Animals are going extinct. There's plastic in the fucking ocean. We don't need any more fucking people. And especially, you know, if you're honest with yourself, have you done anything great with your life? <laughs> Is the person you're banging doing anything great? The answer to both of those questions is no. What are the odds you're gonna make a great person? I'm not saying you're gonna make a bad person, you're just gonna make another person that doesn't go when the light turns green because they're staring at their fucking phone. All right, I'm out of time, you guys were awesome. Thank you so much. So anyways, it's been uh, the Me Too movement has happened since the last time I was here. Well, no, it had to happen, Jesus Christ. But you know, I think it's dying down, you know? I don't know, I think they got everybody. <laughs> <All right. laughs> just, just judging by the stories, I feel like they kind of got everybody. Because the first stories that came out, they were fucking unbelievable. It was just guys taking their dicks out at work, like, look at it, look at it! Ah, ah, ah. Fucking blocking doors and jizzing on plants. You're fucking at home watching, Jesus Christ, people did this shit? I remember this, this one poor woman said she was a PA, went into some director's uh, trailer, and he came, allegedly, came running out, masturbating vigorously while holding a shrimp cocktail. <laughs> I swear to God. I know that's fucked up, but I gotta tell you something. It's a little bit funny that she felt the need to use the adjective vigorously after she said he was masturbating. He was masturbating vigorously. I'm thinking in my head like, uh, as opposed to what? <laughs> as far as I know, there is only one successful way to perform that act. And that would be vigorously. 
Is there another way to do it? Can, can you do it passively? You know? Is that how Sting does it? Is that how he's able to fuck for hours and hours? Fans a little air on it, he puts on fields of gold, just lets that thing rise up, just, just letting it marinate, right? <laughs> yeah, so the stories were big in the beginning, like, oh my god, what a bunch of fucking animals. And then they, they just started tapering, tapering off, and about, I don't know, six months in, they just sounded like bad dates. It was like, he was, he was ten minutes late, the chicken was cold, I think I was raped, career over! <laughs> What about my side of the story? Fuck your side of the story! You have a dick and balls! We don't want to hear it! Yeah. It's really weird how the whole thing... It went from like nobody listening, men not listening to women at all, to just this total overcorrection that anything they fucking said means it happens, you know? They got these hashtags like, you know, believe women. Believe women. Right? It's a little open-ended, huh? Just straight across the fucking board? All of them? Every last fucking one of them? What about the psychos? What about the ones that key your car and light your shit on fire because you didn't, you didn't fucking answer a text? What about them? Huh? How about you believe like 88% and that last 12% that's out of their fucking minds? You know, I think that's a fair percentage, wouldn't you? No? Are you too afraid to not believe? No, no, that's, that's the world we're fucking living in right now. No, everything has just become fucking absolutes in, 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 in the States. It's fucking nuts. Like that Colin Kaepernick guy, right? You knew when he was like protesting during the national anthem, no one was going to listen to what the fuck he had to say. No matter how much he explained it. He goes, I'm taking a knee during the national anthem. This is a protest about police brutality, the way people of color are treated. We'd like to open a dialogue. He got about halfway through that. People are like, my brother's fighting in Iraq, you fucking piece of shit. <laughs> it's just like, buddy, buddy. You, the, Nobody is saying your brother isn't in Iraq fighting. You're not listening. This is about police brutality. My brother's a firefighter. He watched 9-11 on television. No, 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 buddy. Nobody's saying that your brother's not a firefighter. I have bones burn my heel. I can still stand up during the fucking song. Buddy, nobody is saying you can't see a fucking podiatrist. All right? You're not listening. That's what it became. It went from not listening to women to just believe women, right? And then, you know, and then people just like, did you see that story? Did you read this story? You, you can't make something like that up. I always want to be like, well, did you see Star Wars? <laughs> I mean, somebody made that up. They made like fucking 15 of them, you know? People can make shit up, right? You're part of the fucking problem. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> no. Yeah. I'm not saying these people are right. And I'm not saying that I'm right. I know I'm a fucking moron, you know? <laughs> but that Duck Dynasty guy, I know what he said was wrong, but I don't get the shock. He said that homophobic stuff, and people are like, can you, can you believe? Can you believe it? Yeah, I totally can believe it. <laughs> if I was in Vegas, I would have put 90% of my shit on that he was going to say it. <laughs> I'd give him a 10% benefit of the doubt, just in case. Are you seriously shocked some redneck with a beard down to his dick sitting in a boat in the middle of a swamp shooting varmints? Like, what did you think he thought? Did you think he had like some progressive ideas on same-sex marriage? Yeah. Didn't he think, didn't he think exactly what you thought he thought, you know? You know what kills me too? That fucking kind of shit, that, that homophobic stuff, that all comes from the church, man. Doesn't that come from that shit? Well, they, they, there's, there's something in there. I never read the book, all right? I tried to. They need to fucking update it, all right? They update iTunes every fucking six days. Can we update the language and make it a little more user friendly for someone like me, right? No, that's, that's where he gets all those fucking ideas. That Duck Dynasty guy, it's not his fault that he went to, uh, what, he went to Sunday school in like 1949, you know? I think all of that shit comes from the church. They just fucking brainwash you. You know? You come, don't, don't clap, don't clap. I don't read. I don't read. Follow someone else. I'm telling you. They brainwash you. you come into the church, your brain's all empty. They just fill it up like a jelly donut. Just brainwash you. Say what we say when we say it. Say it again, then you can go home to your toys. All right, I'll say it. I'll say it again. Now can I go home to my toys? Right? And you repeat everything they say. 
The good, the bad, and the fucking horrific. They stick a star in your forehead, you're a big boy. Yeah, the big people like me. You get on with your life. You go to college, you get a master's degree in English like this redneck dude had. He invents the new duck whistle, or whatever the hell you call it, right? Yours goes, what, what? Mine goes, what? A fucking what? Dude makes a zillion bucks, gets his own TV show. He's loving life. And out of nowhere, here comes that same question 60 years later from Sunday school and he stands up like the Manchurian candidate. Jesus likes hookers and lepers, doesn't like the queers. And everybody freaks the fuck out. And he's like, oh, that's what they said. And they're all dead. Oh, where'd everybody go? I thought I was a good boy. And you're just this scared old man getting yelled at in a boat. I don't understand. I don't understand why a group like GLAD, right? I always forget it's gay, lesbian, ad, whatever the fuck it stands for, all right? Why do they go after the old guy in the boat? Why don't they go after the people writing the book, all right? Go and go, hey, could you please tear it out of, you know, those couple of, of a pages, right? They're not gonna do that. That's the Vatican. They're their own city. They got a wall around their own city. They're, they're brushing off cases of pedophilia like it's nothing. They're not taking their call. Oh, what happened? Really? Go fuck yourself. Click. They don't care. No, I learned, I learned a long time ago. Like, I, I think it's whatever. Whatever you're into, you're into. But I don't know. I'm not into that religious stuff where... Uh, and this is why. I actually walked away from my religion. Just, I had to be honest with myself. One, I didn't like to go... In, I didn't like going to church every week, you know? <laughs> I just didn't. Part of it was I'm lazy. I don't like getting up on Sunday. And the other part was, I already heard all the stories, okay? <laughs> heard it three, four times. The dude hasn't come back yet. You know, we're just sort of mulching over the same shit here. I got it, <laughs> right? And then the other aspect was, you know, I actually, uh, I had to be honest with myself. I felt my religion made sense and everybody else's sounded stupid. <laughs> I did. Look, the, I'm not talking about the basis of every religion. The basis of every religion makes sense. You know, the Ten Commandments, right? Don't kill anybody. Don't touch my wife, that's my bike, right? <laughs> that all makes sense. Of which I've broken, I think I've broken just about every commandment except for the fifth one. That's it. I haven't killed anybody yet, all right? But the murderous thoughts that I have sometimes, I, I think I could do it. Like when someone gets on a plane and they kick off their loafers and they're wearing those gold-toed like dress socks and they cross their feet at the ankles and they, they just start rubbing their feet together. Like, I, I see the whole thing. See the whole thing. Wrapping that sock. <laughs> I see the whole thing. So we'll see. Still early on, right? But just the stories of how we got here and where we're going and what happens after we die. Everybody else's religion sounded stupid, you know? Like, I live out in Los Angeles. There's a bunch of Scientologists out there. And the first time I heard the story of Scientology, I was like, that is the dumbest shit I have ever heard in my life. Yeah. Like, your, your guy's name is Ron. <laughs> Ron. And he wasn't alive thousands of years ago, so you can hide a lot of it in the mystery. This guy was alive like 45, 50 years ago. He had a driver's license. <laughs> Social security number. There's like footage of him stubbing his toe. Motherfucker, right? <laughs> I don't know what happened. He was working at Denny's. He got sick of it. He's like, oh, I'll start a religion. Hey, everybody, there's a spaceship coming back. Everybody's getting sneakers. This is Tom Cruise. We're going to try to make you clear. All right? Now, look, I'm paraphrasing. I'm paraphrasing. To be fair to the Scientologists, I am paraphrasing. But that's essentially what they believe in. And I said that is the dumbest shit I ever heard while simultaneously still kind of believing that a woman who never got fucked had a baby that walked on water, died, and came back three days later. So, yeah, that made total sense to me. So it just hit me one day. I was just like, well, why, why does that make sense? And that shit doesn't, you know? They got a spaceship in theirs, you know? We, right? We had the space shuttle, you know, the sneakers. There's a lot of shit I can relate to in this. Oh, I just noticed this thing came off. We can't have this. There's got to be continuity. 
between the fucking shows here. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> this thing never comes off. It's right when you tape a fucking special, then everything just falls apart. Royal Albert Hall, huh? Where did you buy this mic stand, huh? <laughs> You know the mic stand guy's all fucking pissed off. Right, it's a jolly good fucking mic stand. I know you have a fucking gang. <laughs> fucking gang, bitch. You know, son, everything fucking falls off on it. <laughs> now, today, you, the queen comes down here and sits in a box and watches this show. <laughs> you know what I heard about you guys? <laughs> Actually, by the way, I've been over here for a week, and as an American, I gotta say something. You guys are pretty fat, too. with the men, but I don't give a fuck how fat you get. You're gonna pour yourself into your skinny jeans. They still got them. It's like you're squeezing all the fat to the top like toothpaste. Right, still wearing me same jeans from primary school. <laughs> um, I don't know. But anyways, you know what I'm afraid of? You know what I'm afraid of? Robots. Yeah, I saw one get, I saw one get interviewed on 60 Minutes. The top journalistic program in the United States. And he's just sitting there getting interviewed, not nervous at all, just rattling off all the fucking answers, you know? Not smoking, not fucking, you know, leaking oil, whatever you would do as a, as, as, as a nervous robot, right? And, and the reporter's asking him questions, and in the end he goes, so tell us, he's like, uh, he's like, what are your goals? And I am alone in a hotel room, and I literally lean towards the TV, I'm like, do these fucking things have goals? <laughs> And the, the, the fucking robot just answers. He just goes, uh, to be, uh, he goes, well, what are your goals? And the robot goes, uh, to become smarter than human beings. <laughs> yeah. And the reporter just blows by it. He's like, okay, and uh, what's your favorite color? <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm standing on my bed yelling at the TV like, dude, unplug that fucking thing. Take the batteries out. Pour the wa pull the wires out. Do something. How many sci-fi movies do you have to see before you realize where this is going? <laughs> So anyways, every smart person, every super smart person in the world is saying these fucking things are gonna kill us. Even your boy here, the guy, he recently died. What was his name? He was, uh, he was always sitting down. <laughs> Hawkins, Stephen Hawkins, yeah. Too good to fucking stand up and make his point just sitting down all fucking smarmy. <laughs> oh, I care so much. I poured ice on myself. Um, and I showed off my abs at the same time for the gram. No, I'm just fucking with you. I'm so glad that guy's fucking dead, though. You know? <laughs> Look at you guys, you're hot. How much longer do you want him to suffer? You don't believe in an afterlife? Maybe he's up there now, he's, he's, his fucking legs work, he's getting an angelic blowjob. How much longer do you want him to fucking sit there so you can feel better about yourself? Well, at least I'm not all fucking twisted up saying smart shit, right? I couldn't fucking stand that guy. <laughs> he was so fucking negative. He never had anything positive to say. Hey, Steve, what do you got for us today? In 2035, there'll be no more apples. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Wasn't thinking about that. Now I am. Hey, so what's the solution? It's too late. We needed to try 40 years ago. Thanks a lot, buddy. I'm going to go cry with my child now. Dude, I could hang with that, out with that guy for about three minutes before I took the brake off his chair and just swung him into the other room. <laughs> hey, Steve, come back here when you got something dumb and positive to say. Yeah. Well, listen, I agreed with all of these super smart people thinking that these fucking robots were going to kill us, right? I agreed with all of that shit until a couple of years ago, I was in New York and I was looking through a newspaper, right? And I have a whole new fucking theory. But in order for me to tell you my theory, I have to quickly take you back to the deep, dark, sordid history of the blow-up doll. All right? I know there's a lot of millennials here, young people. You probably don't even know what one of these is. All right? With your fucking, I don't know what you guys do, your virtual reality glasses, you know, fucking free porn flying by you, grabbing titties. What, what, whatever, whatever it is you're doing. All right? Back in the day, this was the deal. If you were a person and, and you wanted to have sex with somebody else, but like nobody else wanted to have sex with you. And you know, you, you weren't strong enough to hold anybody down. I mean. <laughs> you had to go, you had this how it was. You had to go out and you had to get a blow up doll and you had to fucking go out and get it. 
You had to fucking go out and get it, right? You couldn't just order it off of an Amazon and some delivery guy shows up. He doesn't know what's in the box. You're standing there like Tom Hanks. Hey, how you doing? Great to see you. <laughs> I'm gonna fuck that. You have no idea what it is. Now, dude, you had to go down and you had to fucking get this thing. You had to find a porno store. You had to work it out that was just far enough away from your house that no one's gonna recognize your car. You drive down at like 11 in the morning. Who the fuck is gonna be there then, right? You park in the back on like a Tuesday, just sitting there in the car, psyching yourself up like, okay, I'm not hurting anybody. It's just an urge. Just get in there, okay? Hand in the money. Just get in there and get it done. You yank your hat down. You fuck. You walk in with all your courage, and then you get in there and be too many other perverts in there, and you get all psyched out. So what you do is you just grab a bunch of videotapes and you walked up to the counter and you had to make it look like it was an impulse buy, right? And you're walking up and everything, all the creepy shit was behind the counter, right? Just fucking heads and feet, just an ass body part, serial killer buffet. What fucking world am I entering? Oh my God, somebody's fucking a neck, Jesus Christ, right? And you set it down. Just make it look real subtle. Okay, buddy, is that gonna be all? Ah, uh, yeah, no, uh, maybe that, maybe that thing down the end with the surprise look on its face. Uh, maybe I'd like to take a shot at that, I don't know. The guy wraps it up and then you finally get it, you give him the money, you fucking run out to the car, you know, have this whole weird emotion. You're like excited and you hated yourself. Thank God I finally did it. What the fuck is wrong with me? You just drive off. You go back to your little shitty fucking apartment and you had to blow it up quietly. So none of your neighbors heard, just like, Then you got excited, start going a little faster. And just watching this thing slowly come into life, just like. Right? And then you'd wrap those rubber legs around you. Yeah! And God forbid you got caught. Your roommate comes walking in, he's fucking a blow up doll! Dude, your life was over. You had like six minutes to get your mom on the phone, like, Mom, I love you, and you're never gonna see me again. Don't believe what people said about me. I'm so sorry. I'm going to Alaska. Oh, God, God, click. That was it. You moved to Alaska. That was no one ever saw you again. And that's why to this day, if you go to Alaska, there's like eight men for every two women. Yeah, because that state is littered with men who got caught fucking shit they shouldn't have been fucking. So now, fast forward to about 2016. I'm in New York City. Right? And I'm looking through the newspaper, whatever, and I come across an article, and it's on this robot that for $10,000, you buy this thing, you can have sex with it. Right? Now notice, five minutes ago, I brought up a blow-up doll. Didn't even have a joke, just said blow-up doll, and you all laughed. <laughs> a blow-up doll. Who would do such a stupid thing? Right? That's weird. Five minutes later, I say a robot that you can have sex with, dead silence in here. <laughs> As if collectively, you're all just like, well, what does it look like? <laughs> no means no, that's another one. No means no. It's like, no, it doesn't. All right? Look, look, no means no. No, that means no. All right, but no, stop it. What are you doing? Oh my God. You're being so bad. Stop it. No. Yeah, that's not a fucking no. That means I want to do it, but I'm afraid you're going to judge me, so I'm just going to make it look like it was your idea so you don't figure out that I've already performed this act with 40 other fucking people, right? But then, then you go to court and you get a bad read and there's some guy reading it. Oh, your honor, she said no. Stop it. What are you doing? You're being so bad. Yeah, and you just sit there like, she didn't fucking say it like that. She didn't say it like that. Yeah. So now everybody's just like scared shitless. You know? Because I guess if women ran the world, there'd be no war. Evidently, there'd be no due process either. So you just gotta sit there going, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> No, it's fucking nuts. People are so scared now. You now have, you have the male feminist. Like, where the fuck did that come from? Just out of nowhere, last couple years. I'm a male feminist. Uh, I've always championed women. No, you haven't. You haven't. This shit came out and you're fucking scared. You did something. You grabbed some fucking titties. What the fuck did you do that you have to overcorrect that fucking heart? What kind of a man who still has his balls is walking around saying that he's a male feminist? I'm a male feminist. 
I totally see the way you see the fucking world. It's, it's impossible as a man who was raised right. <laughs> to be a feminist. You can't do it, you're a man. Look, you, you, you can agree with it, you can empathize, sympathy, you can do all of that shit, but you can't be it any more than I can stand here and just be like, I'm a Black Panther, fight the power. And then I walk out the door, a blue-eyed white dude, and I get to live that fucking life, right? I don't know. I don't know, ladies. I don't buy it. Maybe, maybe you do, I don't. Anytime I hear a guy say I'm a male feminist, I always just think that is the most pathetic, limp dick way ever to try and get some pussy, right? Like that's literally, that is literally the fucking game you had when you were on a first date when you were 16, you all nervous and your whole game plan was just agree with her, maybe she'll touch it. <laughs> so what are your favorite bands? I like whatever you like. Will you touch it now? Did I do it right? Uh. Yeah, it's a weird time right now. I'm glad that I'm fucking, you know, married now. I don't gotta fucking deal with any of that shit. You know, if younger guys, I don't know. How do you deal with it? Like, you know what was really fucked up in all of this now? Is, is what about women who like it rough, right? That doesn't happen here in the jolly old England, right? Not at all. Everybody gets all dead silent, big fucking elephant in the fucking room, right? Yeah. How the fuck do you, what's that? Ask for consent. Ask for consent? Doesn't that take the move? Well, Jesus, that kind of took it in a weird way. <laughs> Whatever the fuck I was saying, however you heard it, that's not what the fuck I'm saying, all right? <laughs> you know, I've really listened to this Me Too movement. I think I'm, for the first time in my life, I'm gonna ask for consent. <laughs> I'm really gonna do it this time. I've been feeling... This is why you can't judge comedians. Do you understand this? Do you understand what the fuck I was saying and how this fucking jackass just heard it? <laughs> you know? It's not what I said anymore. It goes into your fucking ear hole and gets cut with your whole fucking childhood. Oh, this is what he means. If you wouldn't mind that. No, like fucking women who like it rough. Like, that's gotta be so fucking weird. <laughs> I remember when I was a single man a long time ago. A lot of hair ago, right? Still wasn't a good look, but I was single. I was out there taking some at-bats. I remember that shit. You meet a woman, and when it started going down that road, like you knew you were gonna hook up, what you tried to do, you tried to get a jump on it, right? You tried to figure out what they liked in the bedroom because you wanted to satisfy them because there's nothing worse than if you don't satisfy them. And you know they're gonna tell all their friends, and then you gotta fucking move, and now there's social media, you got a fucking nickname. It's, it's a nightmare. So you, you just try to, you know, you try to do, you know, a little fucking intelligence, you know? You'd be sitting there hanging out, just being like, yeah, you know, so, uh, you know, what are you, uh, what are you into? What are you, uh... <laughs> What do you like to do, right? One night I asked this woman that, she set her drink down, she looked me right in the eye, she's like, I like to get fucked. <laughs> and I knew what she meant. I was like, all right, this is gonna be one of these. Okay, here we go. To, we're gonna have to go hard on this one, right? We had a great fucking time. Now, I don't know how I would hit today. I would just be like, all right, I know what you wanna do, but like, you're gonna have to do it. You understand? Like, I'm just gonna stand here and then you just, back into me however hard you want. You control how hard you're backing into me. Then I'm gonna lay my hand on your shoulder. You can put your ponytail in it. I will slowly close my hand around it. And at any point you, you, want, you want to yank your head like that, that's on you. My other hand will be just to the right of your right ass cheek. If, if you, you want to do one of those, that's fine. But I am not doing anything. I'm just gonna stand here like a giant fuck stick. And you just, you just have at it. You just have at it. Yeah. You know what's hilarious about sexual assault? <laughs> you know what's hilarious about it? Is how women are acting like that is a uniquely female experience. You know what's funny? I actually, to the letter of the fucking law, within the last two and a half years, got sexually assaulted in this business by a woman. Yeah. And this is my story! <laughs> I feel like I can live my truth 
and be brave tonight and share this with you. It's 100% true fucking story. I was doing stand-up, I was doing a private gig, all right? Private gigs are the fucking worst. You do a public gig, anybody can show up, it broadens what you can talk about, right? You do a private gig, it's like everybody grew up on the same fucking streets. All your jokes gotta go right down fucking Main Street or you're bombing. So all you do is listen to the first comic to hear what's working and what isn't. You just listen to him as he's up there struggling, going, okay, they like bread, talk about bread. Get all the bread you can. Don't make fun of the troops, stay away from the troops, right? So that's what we're doing, right? And uh, the host gets him going, and then he brings up the first act. Okay, she goes on stage. She's not really a comedian, more of a personality. She does her bullshit or whatever, and I'm standing there looking at my jokes, figuring out what I'm doing. She wraps it up, he goes on stage, she goes to get off, I'm thinking, okay, I'm next, I'm looking at my stuff, and she just walks right by me and just fucking, poo, just flicked me right in the head of my dick and kept walking. <laughs> like it was nothing, just fucking pow, and just kept, I couldn't fucking believe it. I know what you're thinking. You're like, oh, is this a friend of yours? Was she flirting with you? Was this a joke? None of the above. You know what it was? I swear to God, it was like a bully vibe. Like she was trying to get in my head. Like, there you go, you little red dick. Poof, follow that. And she just kept walking. Dude, my first thought as I saw her walking away, I just wanted to punch her in the back of the head as hard as humanly possible. Like literally make her leave her shoes, you know? <laughs> But the other side of my brain's like, oh no, dude, you can't do that. You can't do that, it's a woman. And it's just spitball. Well, fucking put her in the ass then. Put her in the ass. Can't hit her, dude. Can't hit her, it's a woman. Well, oh, fucking tell somebody. Tell somebody. And all I'm thinking is like, dude, I'm a guy. You can't fucking tell anybody. Nobody gives a shit what happens to a guy. I'm gonna walk up to another man and be like, excuse me, sir, but she just flicked me in my pee pee and I didn't like that one bit. No, sir, I didn't like that at all. No, I didn't. All the guys gonna be like, dude, if she did that to me, I would've taken my balls out too. Be like, hey, fucking flick both of these fucking sports bar up top, Super Bowl, hey, right? That's all I would've got, right? I'm judging anybody. I didn't know anything about lotion. Never used it the first 33 years of my life. Never used it. Till one night I was going out with this black girl, right? She was getting ready and she was just putting that shit on everywhere. Just slathering it on. I thought she had like a rash or something. I'm like, what are they, like poison ivy? What's going on with you? She goes, no, I'm just making sure I'm not ashy. I said, ashy? She goes, dry skin. I went, wow. I guess I freaked her out a little bit because I was like, wow. Oh. She's like, well, white people get ashy too. I was like, yeah, you know, I, I don't think we do. Yeah, I've been alive for 33 years. No one has ever said, hey, Bill, uh, you look a little ashy. I've never even heard that word until you said it. She's like, you're an idiot, stick out your arm. So I stick out my arm and ever so gently, she just drags her nails down. This smoke starts coming up. It's like pastry flakes flying off, track marks. She's signing her name. She's like, you see that? She goes, that's ashy. You're ashy? Freak me out. I'm like, holy shit, I'm ashy. I didn't know anything about it. All I knew was that I always got itchy in the winter. Couldn't figure it out. Always got itchy in the winter. What the fuck do I get itchy? I thought it meant the bath towel was dirty. That's what I thought. And I would change it out and put a fresh one. Now I'm gonna be okay, take a shower, dry off, fucking itching again. God damn it, I hate the winter. See that? That's why you gotta hang out with everybody. Yeah. There's too much information in the world and every group of people misses a little bit. White people totally missed the lotion seminar at some point in history. I don't know if it's because we can't see it, you know, black people get ashy, it looks like they like leaned up against a chalkboard or something. You know, they can see it. They miss it, their friends help them out. Like, look at your ashy motherfucking elbow. What is wrong with you, right? We miss that shit the way black people miss the whole register your weapons summit. Right? <laughs> Just never got the information. The amount of rappers who've been busted for the unregistered Glock in the car just blows my mind. It's like, why would you do that to yourself? Do you just want to make an album over the phone? Is that what it is? Is that like the new auto-tune or some shit? I don't know. No, it breaks my heart every time I see it. I just think, God, if he just had one white friend, he just had one white friend in his entourage, the dude would have been sitting there going like, is that thing registered? You out of your mind? Get it out of there. Get it out of there. Yeah, it's illegal. That's like fucking three to five mandatory. 
Dude, how do you how do you not know that? That's the question. How do you not fucking know that? This guy's got an unregistered weapon in the car. Like we're just gonna go driving around with it. It's just, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> so see, there you go. All right, you don't need a facelift. Okay, lay off the booze, do some cardio, moisturize. You're gonna be fine. Okay, don't believe in these myths. Black don't crack. It's bullshit. They all put lotion on like every 20 minutes during the day. It's ridiculous. They all get a giant oil drum of the shit at home. Every morning they wake up, they dump themselves in it, shake themselves off, and walk out the door absolutely glistening. Glistening! White guys like me are walking around, no hat on. Hey, let's go sailing! <laughs> Passing out face down in the sand. <laughs> so I've been seeing this girl recently, uh... It's black girl, right? She lives up in Harlem, you know? Gone out like three, four times, you know? First time we hung out, we hung out in like the village area in New York, you know, which is sort of like a racially mixed area. <laughs> so shit was cool, you know what I mean? Second time we hung out was more like midtown, you know? Then the third time, she called me at like 3.30 in the morning and she wanted me to come up to her apartment, right? So it's 3.30 in the morning, she lives in Harlem, I look how I look, so it's a fucking situation. <laughs> yeah, because you know the deal, right? Basically, a white dude feels comfortable up to about like 98th, 99th Street, you know what I'm saying? The second the streets start getting into like triple digits, like 100, 101st Street, start getting like a little asthma, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, you're starting to get a little high up here. You feel that little tightness in your chest? Can you feel that? 106th Street, you're like leaning on shit, like, dude, where'd all the cabs go? How come there's no taxis up here? Dude, what's a bodega? I don't know what that is. Let's get, let's get the fuck out of here. So I'm praying to God she's going to tell me to take the subway, get off at like 105th Street, 103rd, you know, which is like the first stop in Harlem where I can still look over my shoulder and see like all the white people like disappearing over the horizon, you know? But she goes, no, man, you want to get on the Uptown 2-3 train, you want to get off at 125th Street. I'm like, God, fuck, 125th Street. Jesus Christ, that's like right in the middle of everything. I'm going to be surrounded on all four sides. I can't fucking do this. So, at this point, I'm really trying to hide, like, the bitchy tone that's starting to creep into my voice, you know? And I'm trying to ask for really specific directions for when I get up there, because I want to know exactly where I'm going. So she starts naming the streets I have to go down, and every other street up there is named after, like, a black leader, you know? She's like, make a left on Adam Clayton, take a right on Frederick Douglass. I'm like, ah, fuck Adam Clayton. Yo, dude, go on the internet, look up Adam Clayton. Did he kill a bunch of white people during the slave revolt? Dude, I ain't going up there till I know what Adam Clayton did. Fuck this shit. So at this point, I'm really having a battle with myself. Because I'm thinking I can't do this, right? I'm like, I can't do this, but my dick's going, no, come on, man, we can do this, all right? Just relax. Pull yourself together and get on the goddamn train, right? So as always, I listen to my dick. <laughs> oh yeah, I get on the train. By the time I get up there, it's like five or four in the morning, right? I'm staying on like Malcolm X and like Danny Glover or some shit, right? <laughs> I don't even know where the hell I'm at. <laughs> when I see the street, I want to go up. I want to go up St. Nick. I can literally see her apartment building, but there's like five or six black dudes standing right on the corner, right where I want to walk by. So I'm like, fuck! <laughs> I thought I was on like some reality show at that point, like some sort of like white guy survivor. He was ridiculous. <laughs> so I'm thinking, I gotta walk right by these guys, right? You know what's funny? I think that they were actually more surprised to see me than I was scared, you know? And I was really, really scared, you know? But I'm also really, really white, you know? Like shockingly Caucasian. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if you're not ready for me, I can like surprise you. No, especially if you live up there. You've probably seen a white person for hours, possibly days. So when I show up, it's almost like magical. Like a leprechaun came out of nowhere, you know? I felt like I should have like a little pot of gold. Like a rainbow behind me. Top of the morning to you, like it. Kind of dance my way past them. But it's been going all right, you know? Once I get in her apartment, I'm fine, you know? I relax. Sit down, you know, watch a hip-hop countdown. 
Pretend like I know the groups, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just getting there that's a fucking pain in the ass. But you know, I don't get mad at it, because I figure, you know, black dudes gotta go through the same shit though, right? When you go out to the suburbs, go fuck a white girl, right? <laughs> just that same awful feeling of just leaving your people behind, you know, just less and less of you as you're fucking driving out there. Probably start off lean and you're all fucking cool. 20 minutes in, you're driving like 10 and 2, the radio's out like, dude, I don't like this shit. I don't like this shit at all. There's too much grass, I don't see any rims. This is fucked up. None of the windows are tinted. I can clearly see white people in every car. This is fucked up. Listen, you guys were awesome. Thank you so much for coming out. I saw a woman a couple months back, professional soccer player, right? She goes on to ESPN or one of these sports channels and she starts bitching, going like, I don't understand. How come female athletes don't make as much as male professional athletes? Right? And all of these men had to sit there and act like they didn't know what the answer was. <laughs> they had to sit there like dumbfounded, like, oh, uh, I don't know. Uh, why is that? Uh, that is a conundrum. I have, I have no idea. Literally, I'm sitting at home screaming at the TV because you don't sell any fucking tickets. Nobody is going to women's soccer games. You're playing in a 20,000 seat arena. 1,500 people show up. That's not a good night. The promoter lost his fucking ass on that gig. I'm not saying no professional female athletes, Serena Williams, the women in the UFC, you know, but nobody's watching your fucking sport. And then you're gonna come and you're gonna get mad at fucking men. They keep doing that shit. Why are you yelling at us? It's not our fucking job. It's not my fucking job to give a fuck about women's soccer, okay? I have men's sport to pay attention to. This is, it's your bullshit, right? Dude, look at the WNBA. Dude, nobody in the WNBA got COVID. Nobody. They have been playing in front of three to 400 people a night for a quarter of a century. Not to mention, it's a male subsidized league. We gave you a fucking league. None of you showed up. Where are all the feminists? That place should be packed with feminists. Faces painted, wearing jerseys, slashing their titties. Going fucking nuts like the guys do. In the upper deck with their big beer titty. Am I on the jumbo trot? Am I doing it? Yeah. You didn't. None of you, none of you went to the fucking games. None of you. You all, you failed them. Not me. Not men. Women failed the WNBA. Ladies, ladies. Name your top five all-time WNBA players of all time. Come on. That's it. Name five WNBA teams. Name the WNBA team in your fucking city. You can't do it. You don't give a fuck about them. They play night in and night out in front of nobody. It's a fucking tragedy, right? And then meanwhile, you look at the Kardashians, they're making billions. You look at those Real Housewife shows, they're making money hand over fist, because that's what women are watching. And the money listens. You don't want to watch this shit, you watch this shit. They just shoot it over there, drowning these whores in money. In purses, in shoes, in Botox. It's just raining. It's raining money. Yeah, so. The money listens. You'd rather watch that shit. Real Housewives, bunch of women just tearing each other down. Well, maybe that's why your husband left you. Maybe that's why your husband left. That's why you can't have kids, bitch. That's why your ass is as flat as your titties, bitch, right? That's the message you sent. We would rather watch that than see a bunch of women come together as a, as a team and try to achieve a common goal. We would rather watch them actually fucking destroy each other. Yeah. No, no, no. And then at the end, you come back 
then you fucking yell at guys. Like, and it's like, all right, so let me get this straight. I have to buy you a drink, stop the ax murderer from coming through the fucking window, and I have to watch WNBA games for you? Like, when are you gonna pick up your end of the couch? <laughs>